Is there any doubt in anybody's mind watching this broadcast, this presentation, that still believes that the Democrats hold free and fair elections? Put your comment down below. Is there anybody, let me repeat the question, is there anybody, is there anybody alive out there that believes that the Democrats hold free and fair elections? Right? The, the example was 2016. I, you already know my, my answer, right? So the Democratic Party screwed the lead candidate, right, in 2016. And it was led by evil, the evil ones. Mm. <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they screwed this guy, right? Remember Bernie Sanders? I'm going to try not to be biased in this. I just want to lay out the facts. I want to lay out a lot of statistics, and I'm going to give you evidence that suggests, that shows proof of that, that America is still deeply gaslit and still believes that the elections that they're participating in are free and fair. And we know mounting evidence suggests the opposite. In fact, the party that was doing it, the Democratic National Party, the Democratic Party, admitted in open court that they pick the candidate. Despite all of the evidence of uh, all of the supposed elections that we have, you know, when you go down to the, to, the, uh, to the corner, in my case, you go to the library, you vote, you go in there, you vote, you get your little cell and you pick your candidate, right? And it's supposed to be counted and that's how we pick a, a presidential election, I said we pick a primary candidate, but it's all bullshit, right? We know it's bullshit, right? They purge voters. They fucking, the exit polls don't match. Who even knows? It's just a black box, right? So here's the evidence of that, right? So in, in 2000, I just want to talk about 2020. I want to give you the way. How is this, my point is, how is this going to happen again, right? This guy got screwed by these folks hard, right? Good, opened them right up, right, in 2016. Now, uh, this guy also never said, he never called these two creeps out and the rest of them, right? He never called out the Democratic Party on the cheating, right? He just said, oh, no, no, it's a, yeah, 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 they tilted the scale a little bit, you know, they favored him. But it was overt cheating, we know that. And this guy never said anything, but this guy's running again and he's likely to be the favorite. He is the favorite, he's likely to win, right? If all things are fair. So let's just look at 2020, how exactly the primary is going to be rigged, right? It is already rigged, but I want to show you exactly how they're going to do it. In 2016, it was overt cheating, right? They got caught, right? And then they blamed the Russians, right? The Democratic Party blamed the Russians. They got caught uh, in, in Podesta's own words and in Hillary Clinton's own words in the DNC fraud lawsuit. In the, in, the, in the lawyer's own words said that we picked the candidate. We Democrats picked the candidate, Right. And it got out of hand, and Trump and Bernie Sanders ran away with the election, right? He ran away with it, and they couldn't catch him, so they cheated overtly. But this time, they're, they're a little more savvy, right? So how, how are they going to do it, right? So the, the magic number is this. As the primary rolls around, the rules have changed a little bit, and I'll explain those so that they're clear. The magic number is 1885, Remember that, 1885, that was the year that uh, Grover Cleveland was elected to president or was sworn in in 1885. It was also, uh, I don't know, all this stuff happened. Oh, uh, Mark Twain's, uh, uh, Mark Twain released his big, his big mystery, uh, his little, you know, books. <laughs> so a lot of shit happened in 1885, but just remember 1885. Hold that number, 1885, in your mind for one second. All right, so... So it back in back in 2016, right? The 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 rules have changed. The superdelegates would vote on the first ballot, right? The superdelegates were are are 750 jackoffs that have 10,000 votes each and they're allowed to step in and swing a vote, swing the election right? against the people. Right? It's so crazy, man. It's, it's the most undemocratic thing you can imagine, but here's here's the deal this time, right? So Overall, overall, right? Um, the there are seven, there are th uh, three thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight pledged delegates. Now, what what does that number represent? That number is half of eighteen eighty-five, right? So, in order for one of these candidates to clinch the nomination, nomination. Three things, one of three things has to happen, right? Now, the first one is ridiculous because if a single candidate wins a minimum of two, two, 
six, seven delegates. The super delegates will be allowed to vote, but it doesn't matter. So number one is not a, a possibility, right? This is, the, I'm going to show you how they're going to rig it. They're, I already did this video, but I want to show you again because it's starting to uh, make more sense now. If a single candidate wins 885 above, right, superdelegates will be barred from voting. That's it. Right? That's, that's it. Right? If no candidate wins 884, superdelegates super delegates come in and vote. Right? And that's how they'll swing the election. So the object is to get this guy and hold him under 885. Right? Why? Because he's the favorite and he represents all the policies that the American people want. Right? And the, the Joe Biden is the shit sandwich. He's the he's basically the Hillary Clinton without the divisiveness. Now, people there's still people out there, at least one commentator is saying Hillary Clinton's running for president. She's she's running, she's running, she's gonna jump in, right? Look, they got the, Hillary Clinton is is one of the most divisive you know, polarizing figures in America. There's just no way that she that she could win. All right? But Joe Biden, Joe Biden is 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 Hillary Clinton without a penis. Right? She's he's he's Hillary Clinton's policies without the mm, he's a little creepy and he grabs children, you know, by their breasts and all that shit. But aside from that, he's essentially a a blank slate, right? He doesn't have that kind of baggage. But again, he does because of Obama and there's a million things. He voted for the, the crime bill and all that shit, right? I, we, we know all about that. But the point is that Joe Biden is the corporate pick. Joe Biden is the corporate pick, right? They've already said it in the back rooms, right? So, so back to this number, 885, right? So that's the, that's the number of pledged delegates that one candidate must get. It's half of... It's half of um, half of eight uh, three thousand three thousand seven hundred sixty. It's half. Right? There was something else I wanted to say in there. So anyway, um, so the two thousand twenty primary schedule is listed below with dates. I'm going to give you all the dates, and I'm going to show you exactly where the knife is going to get jammed into the leader's back for each state primary and caucus. The dates may be subject to change as states and political parties make their final decisions. They're pretty firm at this point. Please use our contact mode. So, so Super Tuesday is March 3rd, right? But the elections start as early as February. That's where Iowa, New Hampshire, North, South Carolina, a couple of the states, right? But it only, it only amounts to 230 delegates of the possible of the of the possible three thousand seven hundred sixty three, right? Now, so Iowa January is is uh, February third, February eleven, February fifteen, February twenty two. Now, am I making this up? Should we should we look at the corruption? Am I? I'll I'll I'll, I'll solidify the corruption in a second, right? The DNC fraud lawsuit. Not only did the Democrats admit that the elections are rigged, right? That they 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 admitted it in open court that they're rigged, but I actually interviewed the guy. Remember, uh, Jared Beck, right? We'll talk about him, right? And we'll hear Bernie in his own words say, right? Remember when I interviewed Jared Beck? We'll listen to a little bit of that too. So, so um, where am I? Oh yeah. So February, all of February, we're going to get a whole whole big bunch of votes, two hundred and thirty. But on March third. That is Super Tuesday. Look at all these. Look at all look, 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 how many vote. Right? Now, this is different, right? Here's the knife. Right? It's California. 416 delegates, right? That's enough to stop, stop the leader, Bernie Sanders' momentum. That's enough to do it, right? And who happens to be the favorite candidate or the, the, the beloved candidate of California? Camilla Harris. Camilla Harris is a senator from from California, and not just because she's a senator, but she she's involved in the in the California cheating apparatus, right? So they're gonna cheat and they're gonna fudge the numbers and make Camilla Harris look like maybe the winner of California, which if you could imagine how ridiculous. Right? Remember what happened the last time in California? California. Uh, in the primary, voted way late, and and uh, those ballots weren't even counted. 
there were two million ballots, an estimated two million ballots that weren't even counted. That that uh, the the fake media called the election while people in California, like still two hours left of voting, was still online voting, and they called the election. Right, so that was it's totally rigged, right? So California expect a rig, where the again the object is to stop have twenty five candidates. Nobody, none of them are potential winners. The winner is Bernie Sanders. And to get 24 candidates around him, just, you know, the donors are dumping money into these people to stop Sanders from getting to 8885, 1885. That's the object right here. So all of these people will go, uh, will vote all the way up to March 3rd, right? Is it March 3rd? Yeah, on March 3rd, right? So then... March 7 rolls around, March 7, March 10, a couple other people go, right? And then you get another another 562, right? Big states, right? You got, and not only in, in Super Tuesday, it's not just California, but look, you've got Texas. These are big, delegate, uh, rich states. Massachusetts, there's where Elizabeth Warren will suck a little uh, life out of, the, out of the party as well. She'll suck some for herself, because she's the senator from Massachusetts. But essentially, by March 10, no, let me change that, correct that. Yeah, by March 10, and then what comes, right? March 10, March 14, all right, by March 17, right? So the Democratic primary begins February 2nd, Iowa. The next month, this is going to happen quick, right? By March 17, right, you already have... You already have 2,000, over 2,000 delegates that have voted, right? Now, if if Sanders is the clear winner, right, if the leader is somehow allowed to cheat his way into the front of the pack, <laughs> right, it's so sad that it's, that it's all cheating, right? Then maybe some of the other candidates will, will bow down, right? Wouldn't that make sense? They want to win, right? Don't the Democrats want to win? They want to win. They want to win the election, right? Isn't that what elections are all about, win the election? Uh, but no, it's not because, because they fucking cheat, right? So here's Bernie Sanders confronted with that very question. Mr. Potato Head at TYT actually did a good job and asked him a, a pertinent question. And, and listen to what Bernie said. Now, you mentioned there that if, if you don't win the primary, you'll support whoever the Democratic candidate is. And you get asked that question all the time. What I've noticed is that the other candidates don't get asked that question of whether they'll support you. But the New York Times had a very... Because they're not going to support him. That's the point, Mr. Potato Head. Why don't you make the point? See, this guy, Cenk Uger, doesn't believe. He thinks, uh, oh, everything's on the up and up. That's not really rigging. Rigging is not rigging. He's just a fucking liar, and he's, he's got his head up his ass. He never looked at the DNC fraud lawsuit. He refuses to look at the evidence. But nonetheless, he asked a, a, a decent question right here. Interesting story about how some Democratic donors are going to dinners to work to make sure that you lose. Democratic donors are going to dinners to make sure that Bernie Sanders loses. It's a stop Sanders uh, uh, movement. We already know this, right? But listen, there's more. Now, those are Democratic donors, not Republican donors. And now even more controversially, and this is not me, it's the New York Times. They said Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Pete Buttigieg, and Terry McAuliffe were at some of those dinners. The opposing, the, the, the opposing party guys, right? Okay, so it's competition, right? Are at the, at the, the, the dinners, how to stop Sanders. Ah. Does that put a lie to party unity? Right, so is that, is that party unity? So you've got Nancy Pelosi, who's the Speaker of the House. Right? She, she's got nothing to, she's not running. She's not a candidate, and she's at a she's at a meeting to stop Sanders. Why? Because Sanders represents change. Right? He represents the real shit, right? Real populism. Right? Whereas the rest of them are just dime store phonies. Right? So there is a movement. Now let's see Bernie handle the question. Go, Bernie. Well, you know, I'll let the individuals you named speak for themselves. But you know, two things. I think we are going to win the Democratic primary. And I think at the end of the day, uh, we will have the support of Democrats across the board. Uh, they may not be the Democratic establishment and the big... And it's just a bland, blah, blah question, right? He doesn't address the, the cheating at all, right? 
So, so there you go. There's evidence, right? New York Times is 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 implying that all of these people are at a stop Sanders rally, and there's the candidate himself being confronted with it, and he rolls over. He doesn't say a damn word about it, right? So, are the elections rigged? Yeah, they are rigged, right? So, according to the the uh, the DNC fraud lawsuit filed by Jared and Elizabeth Beck in Florida. Um, they are without a doubt, right? The court would have to uh, listen, listen. Listen to some of these statements that the court uh, threw out, right? Um, mm, people paid money. This is Jared Beck. People paid money in reliance on the understanding that the primary elections for the Democratic uh, nominee nominating process in 2016 were fair and impartial. Beck said, and that's not just a bedrock assumption that we would assume just by virtue of the fact that we live in a democracy, and we assume that our elections are run in a fair and partial manner. But that's what the Democratic National Committee Charter says in their own words, right? And then he goes on to um, the, I want to, uh, this, listen to this, right? This is what the lawyers argued. <laughs> the court, <laughs> to win the, 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 the case, right, it was, it, they, they lost the first round of it, and now they're appealing it. But that's none, nonetheless, the point of, the, the, point of the, the lawsuit was to get the DNC to go on record, and they admit that they cheated, right? That's a victory, huge victory. The court, quote, this is their lawyers, the court would have to find that the people who fervently supported Bernie Sanders and who purportedly didn't know that this favoritism was going on would have not given to Sanders, given money to Sanders, right? If they had known that there was purported favoritism. Is this it's just ridiculous, right? There is favoritism that they would have to prove that they gave money knowing that it it's just preposterous, ridiculous legal bullshit, right? Um Right, so it's not in their charter, and here's the actual. This is actually what they said. Right, again, uh, where where you have a party that's saying we're gonna, you know, choose our standard bearer, and we're gonna follow these general rules of the road, which we are voluntarily deciding. We could have, and we could have voluntarily decided that. Look, we're going into back rooms like they they used to, and smoke cigars and pick the candidate that way. That's not the way it was done, but they could have, and they would, they would have all also been, and that would also have been their right. What? What? What is the polling place? What is this? What is this? We go to the polling place and, and, and vote. It doesn't matter. They can pick the candidate. Is that what you're saying? It's preposterous, right? So... I asked, uh, so just look at Jared Beck. Look, I mean, you know, I, I recently got banned from Twitter because, uh, you know, I, I send out probably too many tweets uh, of that nature. But, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I, I like to think of myself as providing or trying to provide some tough love here uh, to people that, you know, I mean, there's really no other word that I can use except that people seem pretty brainwashed. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders ran in 2016 in a rigged primary. Uh, people lost a lot of money. Uh, nothing in the DNC has changed uh, since 2016 that would lead anyone to believe that these uh, primaries in 2020 are going to be fair or real elections in any sense. And yet, you know, here we have people, you know, opening up their wallets to Bernie Sanders again. And, you know, he's already raised $10 million. So, you know, from the perspective of a lawyer that wants uh, to see people not get defrauded and, and, you know, make good decisions with their time and money, you know, it's very, very frustrating. Right. He's out on TV right now. He's saying that, um, you know, uh, I can't, I'll paraphrase him, but he's, he's, he's parroting the Russiagate Russia did it. He, there's no remorse. There's no, there's no, you, so you were the attorney, just to clarify, you were the attorney, the lead attorney, yourself and your wife to, uh, to counsel in DNC for a lawsuit. And Bernie Sanders, throughout the whole process, never reached out to you, right? He never, never, never said never. a damn word. 
And he, so he's, I mean, let me ask you this. What kind of idiot, right, still believes that with all we know that Russia hacked the election and it wasn't a, a, a knife job from uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Donna Brazil and all the, all the, uh, the, the suspects that we know were deeply involved uh, in, in, in the DNC's own uh, words in court. They said that they have, they, they can pick the, you know, pick the candidate in back rooms, smoking cigars right. if they feel like. Right? Right. So what kind of idiot today still believes that, that Russia, you know, Russia did it and not uh, the DNC did it to themselves? Well, I, I think, uh, I don't think anybody with a brain in their head who's really paying attention actually believes that. Wow. Does it, I don't know about that, man, but I think that they do. I mean, so anyway, that's, that's, that's my interaction with, uh, with, with Jared Beck. And, uh, you know, he's, he's confirming that it was, uh, it, you know, these are, these are, this is a, a lawyer. He's the lead lawyer in the case, right? And he, he can, he's confirming for us of the cheating, right? They, they, they spelt it out in, in plain English, right? And I actually did a, my own, you know, they're rigging the polls right now, right? So I did the, the Washington Square poll, park poll. You could watch the video. I ran around the park. I was in the park for five hours, and I interviewed 106 people. I gave them a piece of paper, and, I, and my results find that Bernie Sanders is blowing everybody out by, by he's beating the, the next, the next uh, candidate, Elizabeth Warren, two to one, right? More than doubling her, and Joe Biden, four to one. Now the mainstream media has it the opposite. They've got they've got Biden beating Sanders two to one, and beating Elizabeth Warren like three to one. So it's just they're fucking lying, right? So was I a Bernie Sanders guy? <laughs> was I a Bernie Sanders guy? I should damn sure I was. I, I'll I'll sum it up in a second. I'm just gonna stroll down memory lane. Ah, uh, let me have my moment. Let me have my moment, right? And uh, so is Bernie Sanders. Um, uh, He's he's a he's a misogynist, right? He's a racist. He's a misogynist. He's he's a he's a Putin puppet. He's he's in bed. He's a socialist. He's in bed with he's in bed with Russia. Right? He's he's he doesn't know how to connect with people. <laughs> That's what they're saying, right? He's a Bernie bro, right? He doesn't appeal to women. Blacks hate him. It's all fucking bullshit. It's total bullshit. This is the reality. When you go to a Bernie Sanders rally, this is what you see. This is what you see. Right? You see, smiling people. He's a rock star. He represents the people. Right? It's one. It's one. One time, you know, one time opportunity, America. You know, you either you get it or you or you get screwed again. Right. So 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 that's what I wanted to sum up. I just wanted to say that the magic number is eight 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 seven, and uh, in March, on Super Tuesday, March second, March third, was it March third? You're going to see the, the knife land in Bernie Sanders' is back again in California. That's where they're going to try to stop him. You might see some cheating in Texas, too. But because California has been f- pushed forward, it used to be way in the back, right? It used to happen in April, May, right? Uh, New York is still in April, right? April 28th. But um, you'll, see, you'll see that, that uh, move slow him down. And then if all of these candidates that got some votes – hold on to the bitter end, it's confirmation that how can they keep going, right? How do they keep going with no money? Because because you just, Bernie Sanders and Cenk Yuga told you that that the Democratic uh, um, donors are in meetings now trying to stop Sanders, and how they're going to do that is keep fueling the shit sandwich candidates to pull some votes away so that so that this happens in the final analysis, right? The final analysis is this. What they want to happen is, is this right here. It's number three. It's number three. Where's number three? And I'll, let's read it together. If no candidate will win more than 1,884 pledge delegates, this will result in a contested convention where superdelegates are barred from voting at the first ballot but regain their right to vote for their preferred presidential nominee for all subsequent ballots needed until the delegates reach a majority. So if someone gets 1,883, 
Then the superdelegates, 764, then come in and vote and push the shit sandwich down below over the top. Or they negotiate so vigorously and so incredibly with Sanders that they 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 um, they they suck the life out of them, right? They say, okay, we'll we'll give you the election, but then you'll have to you'll have to confirm that uh, that uh, we're giving you the election, and uh, a, a, you know they'll cheat for him. But it, what what do they get in exchange? Now that's not a likely a likely outcome. The most likely outcome is that they just cheat him outright, right? The second second in line. Joe Biden, right? Uh, that's to, to just throw it on Joe Biden, right? You run for president, they get everything they wanted, right? Or they'll just lose to Trump because they have no problem. The Democrats have no problem losing to Trump, right? They're still in business. They're still making their money. They're still cheating and stealing and, and, and nothing is getting done. Pharmaceutical industry loves it. Uh, big, big, the military industrial complex loves it. Big oil loves it. Uh, everybody loves it. You know, there's no, there's no, nothing has changed. Climate still fucking burning a hole in the ozone. Nobody cares. Right? So everything is the same under Trump. Right? And, uh, but the big changer, the big game changer would be that, uh, that one guy, that old guy Sanders. If he wins, then you've got a, uh, you, you've got a, uh, you know, a real, a real, uh, a real game changer there. So, so 885, 1885, in 1885. Should be a song about that. 1885. Marcus Conti reporting on the current state of election fraud that's happening in our country right under our nose, as if it never happened again. Is it never as if it never happened before? The gaslighting is so thick and so intense. Amazing. Marcus Conti reporting. 